very often you are dealing with values or observations that are not normally distributed. That is a problem unless it's a Poisson distribution or a binomial distribution, but if it's a regular distribution and not of the normal type, you are very limited in your statistical tools. So you may have to transform those observations. Transformation is a very common phenomenon. In this situation I have in column A, I have values that are of the logarithmic type, so the curve that I get is looks a little weird until I linearize the horizontal axis. I'm going to format that axis and linearize it by saying I want a logarithmic scale. And then the curve looks much more decent in this case. It is one that you would use for EC or IC50 determination. But when you do that on the scale, then it may not work for your further calculations. So what did we do here? I replaced column B with the original values with column A. So in column A I used the natural logarithm function. The natural logarithm function gives us the logarithm of a number on base E. And with that one I can calculate things later on. So we should really use in our calculations these two columns. This is basically a transformation. To, to just show you another kind of transformation. In this case my values, my observations, are of this type. I calculated their frequencies with the frequency function and I found this distribution which is definitely not a normal distribution. So the skew factor is 1.63 which is significant if we use the formula that if the skew factor is greater than two times the square root of six divided by the number of cases, we consider that significant. So can we transform these figures? Sure, I tried a linear transformation again based on the natural logarithm. So this is the formula, very simple, based on A2. And I copy that formula downwards, plot their frequencies, and notice how we got a transformed set of data. Transformations are quite common. The log normal one is an easy one. But more in general, you could say that you have to raise your data to a certain power. And you use the lambda variable to do that. If lambda is 1, there is no transformation. If it's 2, it raises all values to the power of 2. 0.5, it takes the square root of all values. 0.33 takes the cube root. A very small number close to 0 takes the logarithm of all values. So what is lambda? In, in this case, we did the transformation with a natural logarithm function. And then... I tested it by using another kind of formula. The st statistician George Box and David Cox developed a formula to identify the exponent lambda. And the basic formula is y values to the power of lambda minus 1 divided by lambda. And I used that formula in column O. So in O2 is A2 to the power of a very small value close to zero, minus one, divided by that lambda factor. And it comes very close to what the natural logarithm function did. Now that we know that, we are going to do that to a more complicated situation. How do you find out what lambda should be? Trial and error is usually not the best option. What you do is you split your series of values in at least ten parts. So 2 to 6 in this case, 7 to 11, etc. We calculate for each section the logarithm of the mean. So in B6 it's the log function of the average of A2 through A6. And in C6 we did the standard deviation. And then we copy that formula down for all the other ones. Then the next step. 
we calculate the slope of the columns B and C in cell I, C. So that has the slope function in it. C6 through C51. On B6 through B51. And we estimate lambda in J6 equals 1 minus I6, which is the slope. And we came up with an estimate of 0 0.3366. Now we can use that lambda factor in column E for a box cop transformation based on the formula that we discussed already. So in E2 we have equals A2 to the power of J6 always and ever minus 1, J6 is lambda, divided by the lambda factor. And we found out that when you plot them in frequency bins you get a pretty normal distribution and the new skew value changed from 1.0 to 0 0.30. So the transformation was pretty successful. Boxcock transformations are pretty fancy, but they are when you they are very powerful when you get desperate. To know all these kind of things and to go into more details and find other tools of doing this kind of manipulation and transformation. I created a CD-ROM and a book. Up to you whether you prefer a CD-ROM with more than 1500 slides or a book with 200 pages. That's up to you. It has four modules. Data analysis, plotting data, curve fitting and statistical analysis. You can find it at genesispc.com.